Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and today we're going to go over Living DNA's new chromosome browser. Now, you might have seen a video from a couple of months ago where I complained about Living DNA not having a chromosome browser, and in fact, they released theirs about two weeks after that video, so it must have been in the works for a while, and I congratulate them on releasing this new tool, which is very valuable for genealogy. So I'm here on the Living DNA website, and I went over to Family Matching. Now there's a couple of ways that you can reach the chromosome browser. I'm gonna show you each of them. First off is just clicking on one of your matches. It's going to pop up the page about them, and then you wanna come over here and click on the Shared DNA. Notice there's a beta underneath it because it's still being tested. And we scroll down, we can see their chromosome browser. Now. What this is showing is the segments that I share with this match. I have six segments on 22 chromosomes, 173, oh, I'm sorry, I match on six of the 22 chromosomes, matching 173 centimorgans. Now in the browser here, you can see it is highlighted the segments. If I hover over them, it changes color slightly. And as I click on each one of them, I can actually see the specific segment data for that segment. The length, the start position, and the end position. If I want, I can go to the table view. Now you'll notice in the table view, it has everything just laid out, chromosome, start position, end position. So if you wanted to copy all of this, just highlight it, and you could copy all that, put it in a spreadsheet, similar to downloading information. Another way to do that is they have a little handy button, copy the segment data. And that is available in both the table view and the browser view. I've clicked on that and it's actually just copied it to the clipboard already. And now I can paste that into a spreadsheet and be able to use that in conjunction with others. So you can be able to compare matching segments across platforms. This is actually great. Living DNA's Chromosome Browser has a, another feature that I find very helpful. And that's this only show segments. So if I want to only show segments longer than seven centimorgans, it just clicks on it and it shows those. On the other hand, I can change that. So I can change that. Maybe I'm only looking for 10 centimorgans. Or for those people who have endogamy, one trick that people have said is, really you wanna set that minimum to around 15 centimorgans and really only look at those that are larger than 15 centimorgans. So I don't have an endogamy on this, but what you can see is it is filtered out all those smaller segments that are not part of this. On the other hand, if you want to go down and see, well, what are these really small ones? Well, you can see, hey, there's some of these that are four segments or so. Now, I typically, only look at anything that's seven segments or more. And in fact, most of the times I'm really looking at seven segments if there is a segment that's more than 10 or 15. So for instance, let me start here at 10. So I have three, four segments, five, six segments that are 10 centimeters, 10 centimorgans or more. In which case I might go down and see, okay, what other seven centimorgan segments do I have? Well, there's those three, and actually I don't have any other seven centimorgan segments. All of the other segments were less than seven, and I can see that on the table view here. If I am showing everything, there's a five centimorgan, five centimorgan segment. Here's a 5.8, a 6.5. So you can see that there's, there's four segments that are below that seven centimorgan that Really, unless I had some other data that showed that, yeah, those are, are valid segments with this match, I'm not even going to worry about that. So I like this because not only does it allow you to eliminate those small segments that they've reported anyway, but it also allows you to increase that to 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 or any number for that matter. Now, I told you that there was multiple ways to get to this chromosome browser. This view is only looking at one person. So you can see there's just one chromosome represented here because it's the match between me and that one person. Well, Living DNA's chromosome browser has the ability to look at multiple people as well. And let's go back and see how you can do that. 
Now, if you want to look at multiple people, the first thing you need to do is you need to add people to a match box. Now, if I click on this match box, you can see, hey, I don't have anybody. Do you want to start creating your first group? I can say, yeah, let me create my first group. What color do I want? Well, I'm just going to select any one of these colors. We'll use this green right here and I can have this name. Well, I'm just going to call this my test group for right now. Now, this is something that is actually somewhat similar to Ancestry, I believe has color matching or color dots that you can put on people. But also, um, I think my heritage does as well. So this is a way that you can group people together so that then you can match them. Now, if I go over here, I can see, hey, I haven't added any members to this group. I need to add members from my relative list. All right, so let's go back to our relative list. And I'm just going to add, you know, the first five or six people. I click on the add to match box, add. Hey, they're a part of that. Add to match box, add, add to match box, add. So now I've got three people in this group. So I am going to now go to the other new tool up at the top here, the multi-view browser. This is basically the chromosome browser for any of your groups, any of the match boxes. You'll notice here that I have just the test group. I can click on the arrow down and if I have multiple groups, I can select multiple groups. Now, the reason why I like this a lot is because this allows me to save groups and go to the chromosome browser for those groups whenever I want. Now, my heritage has a chromosome browser, 23andMe has a chromosome browser, but I can't save groups that I can automatically plunk down into the chromosome browser. I have to go and select those people individually. Um, and so this is great. I love this. I'm going to show segments longer than seven centimorgans. And so we can see here, on each one of these, now there is one line of chromosome for each one of these matches for each chromosome. So three for each one. And we can see where different segments all line up. Now, I just happened to have chosen the first three people. And so there's not much likelihood that we actually match three people on the same segment. But if I'm using a shared matches list, then I can start to see, okay, which of these people match the same segments. That is the start of triangulation. Now, I don't know from this for sure whether they're triangulated, but I have some of the information to be able to contact them and let them know, hey, I found this and I want to see if you match this person. So in another video, I'm going to show you how you have how you can do or how you can get close to doing triangulation on living DNA now that they have a chromosome browser. Um, but it is going to involve having to contact one or both of the matches that you are using that for. So this is great. There's two ways that we can get to this. We can get to it individually from the family matching or we can get to it with the Matchbox where we've put people into groups. Now I'm going to have to do another video also about this new grouping tool because it's great. What we need now is we need more people to be testing at Living DNA so that we can make these tools more useful for everybody. So that is the Chromosome Browser now at Living DNA. It doesn't have a ton of information initially, but it is a great start. And as more people are testing with Living DNA and as they improve these tools and people give them feedback about the usefulness of them, then they are going to be able to improve these tools. Now, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see something more about DNA, then watch this video to my right.